Let us study the structure of a skeletal muscle using some MCQs. So here is an MCQ where I band region of sarcomere consists of. You can pause the video anytime and try to solve the MCQ. So let us go into detail that what is the structure of the sarcomere and what are the various bands and zones it consists of and why is it so. So sarcomere is the structural and functional unit of skeletal muscle and uh, actually each skeletal muscle consists of various muscle fibers so if this is a skeletal muscle it will have lot of muscle fibers which are arranged end to end so these muscle fibers are actually cell of the skeletal muscle now inside each of these muscle fibers there are lot of proteins okay and these proteins are known as filaments and the arrangement of these proteins is such that it is repeating units of the sarcomere so this is the structure of sarcomere and the way these uh, myofilaments or the proteins are arranged they form different zones under light microscopy and electron microscopy so this sarcomere has different proteins known as thin filaments okay actually these proteins are arranged to forming thin filaments and thick filaments and various proteins are there in these filaments and we will talk about these proteins later but the arrangement of these thin and thick filaments is such that that some parts of the thin and thick filaments overlap and some don't so this thin filament actually consists of three proteins that is actin tropomyosin and troponin and uh, they are arranged something like this and then there is thick filament okay so thin filaments again and then there are thick filaments now this part of the thin filament which you see it is attached to z line okay z line basically it is a lot of proteins and this actin filaments are in turn attached to other proteins so you see sarcomere is the portion of these proteins which is between these z lines so this is forming one sarcomere this is forming one sarcomere and these which are you are seeing these are the thin filaments and then in center there is thick filament so because of this arrangement we have different light and dark zones in the sarcomere so what are these uh, bands or zones first we have i band which consists of thin filament and you see part of this thin filament is arranged on either side of the z line right so this here also thin filament right and then half part of the i band is present on other side of the z line okay then in the center we have the thick filament which we are seeing as dark zone right so this is the a band okay so i band formed of thin filament and that too non overlapped region of the thin filament there is no overlapping so from here okay where it doesn't overlap that is i band a band is the entire thick filament whether overlapped or not entire thick filament is the a band then you see the central part of the a band in this diagram if you see this part central part of the a band it is not overlapping so in this electron microscopic structure if we see you see here it is little lighter zone so this non overlapped region of the a band that is known as h band and in the center of this h band we have m line right m line and it is again darker so i will just write that how it is looking i a h and m so this is the arrangement from outer to inner from the z line i band is a non overlapped region of the thin filament a band is the full thick filament h band is the non overlapped region of the thick filament right m line is the central part okay so we will see later little bit that what is this m line what does it consist of and why it is little bit darker so let us come back to our mcq i band region of sarcomere consists of non overlapped region of thin filament and it is the lighter zone because it is non overlapped okay non overlapped region of thick filament is what it is h band okay again it is lighter and there is no particular zone which is defining this overlapped region of thick and thin filament that is only the overlapped region of thick and thin filament fine let us move on to next mcq sarcomeres are separated from each other by so answer here is simple it is 
z line so sarcomeres extend from one z line to other z line let's move on to the next one so here there is a diagram of sarcomere and here it is asked which of the following areas do not change in length during contraction okay so you see that was the electron microscopic picture and this is just a schematic diagram where this is showing z line okay and these uh, brown ones are the thick filament and the black ones are the thin filament so the areas which are marked you should know that what these areas represent so from before this three represents what that is a non overlapped region of actin or thin filament so that is i band then second one second one is the a band because it consists of full thick filament then one which is the central part non overlapped region of the thick filament it is h band okay and if we see the fourth one there is no zone defined for the fourth one so it is just an abstract marking which has been done so in this case which of the following areas do not change in length during contraction so let us see that how the sarcomere looks when the muscle is relaxed and when it is contracted so here there is a diagram where the muscle is in relaxed phase the muscle fiber is relaxed and you see the z lines are far away so what has happened that uh, this myosin or the thick filament moves the actin over it so this actin has moved over it and you see the z lines have come closer so that is one thing that when the muscle contracts z lines come closer or what we say the sarcomere shortens second thing what is happening you see that the i band that is a non overlapped region of the thin filament it is decreasing right so i band shortens right i band shortens then third one what happens to the a band a band nothing is happening a band is the entire thick filament you see it is same right however the non overlapped region of the a band that is the h band it is actually decreasing in size it has become this much because there is more overlapping of the thin and thick filament so h band also shortens so basically if we see a mnemonic if we create his his is the one which is shortening during contraction so s is shorten and also s is sarcomere so h band shortens i band shortens and sarcomere shortens or z lines come closer so let us go back to our question what does it say that uh, which of the following do not change in length so what changes in length his change in length a band doesn't change in length in this i band a band and h band are shown so in this a band doesn't change in length which is basically the second part so second is the correct answer for this mcq let's move on to the next question so which region is depicted by area marked 1 in electron microscopic image of the sarcomere so again we have dealt about this thing one is what one is the entire thick filament and it is the a band suppose the marking is this one right this is what on either side of the z line it is there so this is i band right and what is the third one here again it is the h band and the center one center one is the m line right coming to the question on the proteins which are present in the sarcomere so which of the following is not a characteristic of myosin filament again you can pause the video and look for yourself what is the answer so in the sarcomere there is thin filament and thick filament thin filament is shown here it consists of three proteins it is actin then there is troponin and then there is tropomyosin okay so let us see what are the characteristics of each of these uh, proteins one by one first of all actin is formed from g actin g actin is basically g for globular so there are globular units and these are attached together and what they form is f actin that is filament of actin okay and you see here these red ones are showing the actin filament so there are two f actin filaments which are wrapped around each other then on each filament there are active sites on which actually the myosin can bind myosin head binds on these active sites and these active sites have a site where adp can bind okay so these are the active sites on the f actin then there is tropomyosin 
okay and this tropomyosin covers the active site of this f actin so till the time these active sites of f actin are covered the myosin head cannot bind to this active sites of actin and hence the contraction cannot occur so like f actin there are two chains of tropomyosin as well okay so tropomyosin covers active sites of actin okay and there are two chains of tropomyosin then we have troponin proteins which consist of three subunits here you see three subunits are shown and these three subunits are troponin c troponin t and troponin i so troponin c with c starts calcium troponin c binds with calcium troponin t binds with tropomyosin and troponin i binds with we can say i band or we can say actin okay troponin i binds with actin i band is a wrong uh, connotation here but just for the sake of mnemonic i remember troponin i binds with actin so troponin has three units c t and i so this complex is important for initiating the contraction of the muscle because when calcium is released into the sarcoplasm then this calcium goes and binds with the troponin c subunit of the troponin and when it binds then this troponin pulls away the tropomyosin away from the active sites of the actin so tropomyosin at rest keep these active sites covered and when calcium is released tropomyosin is pulled away and these active sites are exposed and hence the myosin head can bind with these active sites so that was about the thin filament moving on to the structure of the thick filament thick filament is made up of myosin molecules myosin molecules and specifically myosin molecule 2 now this myosin molecule consists of two heavy chains and then there are four light chains okay so these are the light chains of the myosin molecule and each myosin molecule with these heavy chains and light chains it has head and tail so you see tail is formed by the heavy chains of the myosin molecule and head is formed by both heavy chain and light chain so there are four light chains in head and the amino terminal of the heavy chain that forms the head of the myosin molecule now when these myosin molecules join together actually greater than 200 myosin molecules when they join together they form this myosin filament okay so here you see this portion this is one myosin filament with the head so these are the heads you see it is the similarity of with the myosin molecule 2 and again more myosin molecules join and their heads are protruding out of the filament so you see each myosin filament consists of body this is the body of the myosin filament which is basically formed by the tails of the myosin molecule so lot of tails like this it combines together so tail of this myosin molecule combined together so all these form the body of the myosin filament then it consists of arms so the point where this myosin head is leaving the body that is the first arm and then there is another arm where the head is hinged okay so there are two arms of each of the myosin molecules and then obviously there is the head so basically myosin molecule consists of head and tail and myosin filaments consists of body arms and head where body is formed by combining the tails of the myosin molecules and there is also something known as cross bridges and these cross bridges are formed by arm plus head right so arm plus head of the myosin filament forms the cross bridges and there are certain other important characteristics of this myosin filament one that you see that at the central part of the myosin filament there is no heads obviously because the it is formed by the tail of the myosin molecules and at the central part the polarity of the myosin molecule is reversing that means the arrangement of these myosin molecule reverses so that on one side heads are on this particular side and on the other side heads are facing on the opposite side so the central part has no heads and also it is just a combination of tails so that we said earlier that darker m line which was visible in the sarcomere that was because of this combination of tails of the myosin molecules in the myosin filament so this central part is approximately 0.2 microns right secondly 
the overall length of myosin filament is almost constant. In each sarcomere, the length of the myosin filament is 1.6 micrometers. And on the other hand, the length of the thin filament which we saw, the length of the thin filament is 1 micrometer. So both sides, so if this is the sarcomere, both sides this is 1 micrometer, okay. And this side also there is 1 micrometer. And then in the center we have 1.6 micrometers. That is the thick filament. So let us go on to our MCQ and try to solve it. Yes, so which of the following is not a characteristic of myosin filament? It is made up of 200 or more individual molecules. Yes, that is correct. Then tail of myosin molecules bundled together to form the myosin filament. Yes, that also is correct. Then total length of each myosin filament is 3 microns. Well, that is wrong. That I said it is 1.6 microns and cross bridges are not present in the center 0.2 microns. That is yes, that is also correct because that is consists of only the tail of the myosin molecules. So that was about the proteins in the thin filament and thick filament. By the way, these proteins of the thin filament and thick filament and other proteins in the sarcomere, they are categorized as different types of proteins based on their function. So we have something known as contractile proteins. Contractile proteins are actin and myosin right then we have something known as regulatory proteins regulatory proteins are the ones which regulate the contraction and here we have the proteins that is troponin and tropomyosin because if tropomyosin covers the active site of actin then there will not be any contraction this troponin and tropomyosin are important for regulating the contraction and finally we have structural proteins which give a structure to the sarcomere Plus, they also transmit the force which is generated by the sliding filaments that is movement of the thin filament over the thick filament. This force generated is transmitted to the surface of the muscle that is the muscle membrane. So these are the structural proteins and we have discussed about the contractile proteins in detail. Some structure about the regulatory proteins also were discussed. Let us now solve a MCQ on the structural proteins. So here there is a question that actin is tethered to Z line of sarcomere by and tethered means basically it is attached to sarcomere by which protein. So let us see some structural proteins and then we will be able to solve this question. So here again there is a diagram of the sarcomere where you see certain structural protein that is titan. See titan basically extends from the M line from here it extends fully to the Z line. So that uh, part of the titan which is from M line it is not shown here because of the overlap of the myosin. But it is present from the M line to the Z line. So titan is a protein which connects Z line to M line. Then there is other protein which connects actin to the Z line. So here the connection of the thin filament to the Z line will have certain proteins and important one is alpha actinin. Okay. Then we have another protein that is nebulin. Nebulin is present along the length of the thin filament. So it is kind of holding the thin filament and also important for regulating the length of the thin filament. So how much will be the length of the thin filament when the thin filament is being synthesized. Okay. So length of the thin filament is being regulated by a protein known as nebulin. Then we have another protein known as myomesin. Myomesin and myomesin MM it is present in the M line. So here it is present and it connects titan to the M line. So these are some very important structural proteins of the sarcomere. Let's solve our question. So very simple question. Actin is tethered to Z line of sarcomere by it is tethered by actin in protein. Myosin is a contractile protein which will pull the actin towards the center. Troponin and tropomyosin are the regulatory proteins. So that was all about the structure of the sarcomere and the details of the proteins which are present in the sarcomere. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, do press the like button, share the video with others and don't forget to subscribe to the channel Physiology Open. Thank you.